welcome back. So today I want to talk about, boom, stethoscopes, yay! I remember the first time I got one of these, it felt like a Christmas gift all over again. I was so excited to put one of these on and walk around clinicals looking all cool and everything. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna explain to you guys how it works and how simple it is to be honest and you know how to adjust little things here and there. Um, so let me open this. All right, so this is how it looks. I got mine on Amazon. I think it was like 90 to to $100. I don't remember because I got it last year. Um, and then it will come with this like earplug that I've never used um, and this manual because I don't look at manuals so I've never really looked inside of this thing. But I'm sure there's some great information in here but I'm not going to read it right now. <laughs> um and then your stethoscope let me put this down um okay so the the first thing you want to do is adjust the ear the earplug you want it to be facing like towards your nose not i don't know if you could see see how it's like facing this way towards my face because from here you'll get like a clear hearing because it's going directly to your ear canal so you'll be able to hear everything crystal clear and if you're facing it this way it's actually hitting the bone so it's not comfortable at all and yeah you won't be able to hear it and it's it's super painful trust me if you try facing it backwards you're gonna be like ah oh, it hurts so yeah you want it facing towards your face um, and then once you have it in, you kind of want to, you know, tap to see if it, if you hear anything. And yeah, that's about it. And once you start going to the hospital, just make sure you're disinfecting this always because you don't want to be touching from patient to patient to patient and you don't know if they're on any precautions. You always clean, grab an alcohol, um, wipe and always wipe it down. I'm actually in peds right now, so I like to have my kids you know play around with it and like listen to their heartbeat because you create this trust and this bond bond with them and um it keeps them calm you know so then you're able to auscultate everything without them being you know scared or screaming things like that so you know be friendly even with older adults i've had them listen just just for fun <laughs> so that you know they're, they're so lonely sometimes, so they just want, you know, like, that communication with them. Um, okay, another thing is that you want to make sure that this is a thing. I didn't know about this until, like, later. Well, not later, but, like, you know, that you could flip it. Okay, so if you flip it one way, it'll probably have more sound on the diaphragm, and then you could flip it the other way. And then you have the sound on the bell. And then for the bell, you want to use this for like for peds or for any um, brewies, um, murmurs. And basically what a brewy is, if there's like a narrowing in the artery. So you could like place it here, you know, like see if there's any abnormal sounds. Um, and yeah. And then this is the diaphragm. And you use it, you know, for the lung sounds, the heart and bowel sounds. And you want to make sure that you know all the landmarks of the heart. You know, the aortic, pulmonic, herbs point, tricuspid, and mitral valve, which is, you know, the, the maximum point, which is under here. It's in the fifth intercostal space. Intercostal space. <laughs> um, yeah, and then you have to do the lung sounds. So what I like to do is, like, I like to auscultate everything all at once because if you go from, like, like you have your stethoscope here and then like, okay, I'm going to listen to your lungs. And okay, now I'm going to do capillary refill. Okay, now I'm going to go listen to your heart. Like you don't want it to be like back and forth. Just do everything all at once so you get it out of the way and you don't have to keep flipping back and forth. And you kind of look disorganized. So try to do anything with the stethoscope. Get that out of the way. And you know, that's when the patient's calm, you know, you don't know if they're going to start talking and you want them, you know, a calm, quiet environment so you could really hear what's going on. And um, so for the lungs, I like to start off posterior because like I get the back out of the way and then I do everything in the front, the heart and the bowel sounds. So I like to start in the back 
And make sure when you're auscultating that you're going across. You want to go like right up and then across and then you go down, across, down, across, down, across. That's how you do it because you want to make sure that both sides are even. You don't want to start listening to one side and then you can't compare it to the other side. So always make sure you go across and then from the back. You want to start off kind of, think of it like a triangle. You want to start like closer and then you start opening up, opening like a tree. Like, like you think of like the lungs, you know how the lungs are here and then it like opens up. So yeah, just keep going, getting wider and wider and wider and wider. And then same thing with the front. And then do the heart sounds, the five landmarks, and then go into the bowel sounds. And with the bowel, you want to start on the right lower quadrant um, right upper, left upper, and then left lower because, you know, that's like the shape of the colon. And to be honest, I've never listened to the vowel sounds for five minutes and that's what they're telling you to do, like listen to each side for like a minute or something. Like that's not going to happen. Like I've never seen any nurse do that. You don't have time for that. They're so busy. They're like running around. Like the first hype, like first bowel sound you hear, like you're good. Just listen, okay, good, boom, you're done. Because you don't have time to listen for five minutes. Unless you really don't hear it, then you, yeah, you may have to. But like I've never come across that ever. And, um, and then regarding the lung sounds, there's, I, I'm sure you guys will learn about this in school or you have, which is like, you know, any wheezing, ronchi, rails or crackles. Um, I like to listen it on YouTube because, you know, keep listening to it over and over again so you get a feel. And then also, I like to listen to myself too so I could remember how a normal lung sound sounds like. And yeah, so when you go into clinical setting, if you hear anything that sounds funny, like any like rubbing or loud like whooshing sound or like a ee or like they're saying like a hair when it's like like you're going like this, like that's how um, crackle or wheeze, I don't know. It's just a whole bunch of things going on that anything abnormal that doesn't sound like air, there's something wrong. You kind of want to listen to it or let the nurse know or the healthcare provider because you don't want any abnormal lung sounds. Um, okay, and another thing is, is with the blood pressure, it's pretty simple. Like. In school, they taught me that you have to like check the radial pulse and then you count for a whole minute and then let's say you have a pulse of 80. So once you put in the blood pressure cuff, you have to pump, like inflate 20 to 30, like more. And I don't do that. To be honest, like this is all I do because everything in the hospital is so fast paced that you don't have time to, you know, like do like little things and... So basically, I grab my my blood pressure cuff or the spigmo manometer, however I don't say the blood pressure. Um, so you want to put it above here. I'm not gonna put it on, <laughs> but here. So this is where you would put it. Wait, with this here, and then you're gonna put here. I'm just gonna put it in because if not, this thing is gonna be falling out. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Even though it's not tight on me, but I don't have... Okay. And then you're going to put this on and put the stethoscope right here, okay, with the diaphragm, right there. And then what you're going to do, you're going to grab this thing and you're going to grab this. Let me switch hands. You're going to make it tight. The right side is a tight side, left is loose. You're right tight and you're gonna inflate this okay when it goes all the way up to like 200 I usually go all the way up to 200 like I don't care like I just go up to 200 because then you're not wasting any time because what if the person has high blood pressure and you only go up to like 140 like just go all the way up to 200 and then really slow just go to the left very slow and you're gonna see it like gradually deflate and the very first boom, like that love sound, that's your systolic. 
Okay, and that's the, all of these are gonna be like even numbers, so yeah, so the very first one, and you're not gonna get like 147, that's not gonna happen, but 148 or 146, boom, that's your, that's your um, systolic. And then you're gonna let it keep deflating it with the left side, and it's gonna go all the way down, and then the last one is the diastolic. And then that's it, so that's your top number and your bottom number, and then boom, that's it. It's really simple, it's not bad. I think the hardest part is like the coordination. So try to practice on yourself. You know, like this part for me was like the hardest part to get. <laughs> not so much like hearing it, but it was like the coordination. But yeah, it's not bad at all. Um, and really be honest with your numbers. Like don't go into a clinical setting and then like you didn't really hear it and you're just guessing a number. Like don't do that. You kind of want to like, if anything, tell the patient, like, I didn't get it, let me check it again. Like, it's better for you to double check and be sure of it than just guess and just give any number. Like, you don't want to do that. It's not safe. Like, it's not patient advocate. advocate. So, yeah, just make sure that you always double check. And then if you need, you know, someone to give, like, a second opinion, a second hearing, like, ask another nurse or your friend or something to see if like you're on the same range because you know we're still students we're learning so it's okay to ask they say it's okay to ask so i i'm the, i'm the type of person like i ask questions all the time i'm like i don't get it i need to hear it again can you hear it for me even though i think i'm right but just always ask it's important it's good for you and always when you get any chance, like, auscultate as much as you can on every patient, you know, we're here to learn. And then if you hear something, like, go ask the professor, like, I'm sure she'll be glad to help you and, you know, give you, like, a reasoning behind it or what she hears and compare it and see, like, go back to their diagnostics or their um, diagnoses, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, and that's about it. Like, it's super fun. It's once you get the hang of it, you're like, do, 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 like you look so cool and everything with your stethoscope walking around the hospital. <laughs> so yeah, it's fun, enjoy it. Um, take advantage of every opportunity you get. If someone hears like a brewery somewhere or some wheezing, like go to that patient and you know, ask them if it's okay, if you could listen to them because you never know. But yeah, always ask and then listen because we might get these type of questions on NCLEX so it's better to be prepared well guys I am gonna go back to my studying I have my pediatrics exam on Monday and on Wednesday so a lot of studying to do but subscribe below leave any questions for me or anything you want me to talk about and I'll be back <laughs> bye